Hey guys, it's DJ from MyDesign.com and I'm here with part two of my springs and spline dynamics tutorials and this one is going to be about balloons and how you can get an upwards dynamic motion as opposed to a dropping uh, objects hanging off of a string and dangling effect that I showed in part one. So I have my balloon object, I have my string object which is just uh, a sweep nerve with a spline and a little circle set to a low radius and I got my materials applied so it's all good to go so far <clears throat> so first we're gonna start uh, basically the same way as we did with the uh, part one of the tutorial where first we got to add some dynamics to this uh, to these objects so we're gonna add spline dynamics to the uh, string the string uh, spline and we're gonna go and select this uh, actually we're gonna select this bottom so this is where we're gonna have uh, kinda like if a little boy is holding the balloon or whatever uh, it's gonna be holding it from the bottom of the string where this uh, balloon is gonna then react and you know revolve around this kinda center of uh, axis of gravity or whatever you would call it uh, so we're gonna go and we're gonna make that the fixed point so we're gonna hit set and that'll set that another big thing is since we're we're wanting upward motion because this is filled with helium usually so we want uh, if we just left the gravity and dynamics uh, as it is everything's gonna drop and actually how you get to these project settings is hitting command D and that'll get you to uh, all these settings here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to a negative number I'm just gonna go negative 500 and we'll see how that works uh, everything else is good <clears throat> so all right we got our spline dynamics on there we need to add dynamics to our balloon as well so let's go and add a simulation rigid body tag there and then we need our string as well or spring sorry springs and strings so uh, as as I showed in the first uh, first part you need to define two objects uh, you know what's springing off what the one's gonna be uh, holding the bottom of the spring and the other one's gonna be spring off the top of the spring and we need our balloon to be object A and our uh, string we want to actually bring in the string spline string into object B and we want the balloon we don't want it to be the center of mass we want it to be offset it's going to be offset at the very bottom here so the like if the string was tied here the balloons going to be you know bouncing back and forth uh, basically rotating off of this axis uh, and the string we want it to uh, go off of the point selection and uh, Uh, polygon point I'm sorry uh, and basically what polygon point does is you can choose the index and you can see if it's at zero this top point of the spline is zero and when you see that I move it up it's going from I think this has maybe seven or eight points so when I go up in the index number it's going to the next point in that index so I think if we get to, yeah, I think there's eight points. So if we get to the very eighth point index that is referencing this very bottom. So let's actually see what we got so far. So that's not what we want because it's just bouncing back down. What we need to do is jack up the rest length and see how it's kind of hanging out right there uh, if we 
let's bring this to say 425. That's a little bit better. Um, we can actually offset to make sure that uh, this extension is meeting up with the exact bottom of the balloon. Okay, and we can actually uh, bring down the stiffness of the spring because we don't want it to be so so stiff right there. So let's, I found if we actually go to a very low value like 0 0.05, we get a nice slight uh, springiness going on. We don't want it too much because a helium balloon usually doesn't go up very fast. Uh, so that's looking good so far. The one last dynamic thing we have to connect is uh, the top of the, the um, the uh, string here to the balloon. So uh, right now, if we move our balloon and hit play, it just kind of goes off doing its own thing. And we need the, the top of the string to um, move along with the balloon. So uh, one thing we got to do is go and add a constraint tag, <coughs> excuse me, and make sure we have the top of the uh, string spline connect uh, selected and make sure that uh, when you make your balloon the access center is down where the string would actually tie to the balloon uh, which is important uh, so let's bring the balloon as the object we want to set that point to and hit set so now if we go and move this balloon out here and hit play uh, the top of the spline will now match up with the bottom of the balloon. Uh, so that's looking good so far. Um, but if you actually don't want to manually go and animate your balloon, what you can do is add some uh, some there we go, some turbulence or even some wind to make things interesting. So let's make sure our fan is turned the right direction. I think it is. Yeah. So now you have this uh, wind going. You have some turbulence. We bring that up and bring that. So now you have it. It's a little bit too crazy. As you see, it's kind of freaking out. Uh, add some turbulence to the wind as well. So that's looking, it's looking okay. Uh, I would like it uh, the balloon to start a little further down so we have more of the string movement. So how you can do that is uh, change the rest length and bring that to 350. And now we have a little bit more. Bring the dampening up. See, so a lot of this is just playing around with these uh, these settings here and seeing what looks best. So maybe we want to bring the rest length back. Uh, the stiffness is good. Um, so we can add more turbulence. So I like seeing that. Uh, the movement of the string. We can actually go in and play with the uh, spline dynamic settings and if we bring down the rubber option and maybe bring the drag up and bring the stiffness to do two. Let's see how that works. Bring out our timeline here so we can get a little bit longer dynamic simulation going. So that's behaving pretty good. Remember there's, this is like it's a balloon connected to, uh, like wrapped around a, a pole or something like that. So let's 
looking pretty believable. Uh, I'd still like to get a little bit more movement. Uh, let's see. Actually, if we bring down our rotational mass, and what this does is actually makes it uh, makes the balloon more likely to uh, change its rotation uh, off of it, this uh, uh, mass center. Uh, and when we bring that down, we can actually change where the uh, center of where the mass is. So usually, you know, it's a little bit top heavy because everything's, you know, all the helium is, you know, wanting to go up. So uh, we probably want to move the center up, maybe 150. We can actually see what the units are. Uh, so if we get to the top, it's about 250. 30. So let's change this to about 200. We don't want to go to the very tip top. We kind of want to be in that range, maybe even 190. So let's play this again. So now you can see it's a little bit more, uh, we've got a little bit more rotation uh, with the actual balloon, which is nice. Um, I actually don't. Uh, like how much gravity there is going up. So let's actually go hit uh, Command D and let's go back to our general and let's make that a negative 100 instead. So we got a little bit more. We've got a lot of a lot of jerkiness going. Let's bring down the wind because since we lowered the gravity, we don't need as much wind. Or turbulence to make things move. Uh, let's go back to our spring and let's bring the dampening up. Maybe that'll stop that. Uh, actually, let's bring the rest length up. I think that's what's causing that weirdness right there. Maybe 450. Okay, there we go. That was just, when you, when you get the rest length off with the actual length of the spline, that's gonna make things a little bit weird, as you saw. So, maybe 480, maybe that's a good one. Can add more wind back. Too much, too much. So let's just get rid of the wind altogether. Let's just bring turbulence back. All right. So we got our turbulence moving. A little bit more. Bring the scale down. Basically, we just want some decent enough movement or it doesn't look so boring just staying static like that. All right, so that's looking pretty, pretty good now. Um, now, let's actually bring a few more uh, into the scene. And like I did before, the way to set this up so you can duplicate it is uh, just making a null, uh, making sure the null is posi positioned to the bottom of the string because that's where we're, we're going to like offset the rotation of uh, uh, more of these balloons and strings. So let's name this balloon one, group one. And let's duplicate that and we can move that out of the way move this out of the way and yeah uh, to actually edit and move the rotation make sure you're on frame zero because if you're not on frame zero that's when the dynamics start to kick in and it'll actually lock 
uh, lock it so you can't change the uh, attributes of the uh, objects you're working with. So, uh, all right, now we hit play, and uh, you got the balloons bouncing off each other. Looking pretty nice. Uh, so I mean that that works. Uh, this option's good if you just need to have some balloons connected to uh, another object that's uh, kind of stationary. Uh, there's another option I'm going to show that works a little bit better if you want to actually uh, animate, uh, have the uh, the balloons just kind of float up. So uh, like I said this is good if you just want to connect it to one point, but uh with the spring you're kind of limited to uh, the spring movement and stuff so if I, if I actually move this stuff along uh, see because it's a spring it wants to kind of compress and it doesn't come back in it's kind of stiff uh, and no matter how how much you change the spring stiffness and all that stuff that doesn't really change just because of the nature of that object so uh, the next this next uh, way to get some dynamic balloons is uh, still with the uh, dynamics and string dynamic uh, spline dynamics sorry Let's just uh, get all set back up again um so yeah you you uh let's get a string back actually all right let's let's delete all these guys and delete that delete the string spring and go to the one let's bring all that out all right so now we're Good to go again. Zero all this out. Okay. So you you still want to add your uh, dynamics to the balloon. You still want to have uh, your spline dynamics for the uh, for the string. Uh, the only thing you need to do is fix the uh, instead of before how I fixed the bottom point that's fine it's all well and dandy when you want to connect it to uh, something that's uh, that the string is tied onto but this we just want it to kind of float freely into the air so we just need to make sure that this <clears throat> this top point is just connected to the balloon so let's go and set that point and actually if we make this whole object a child of the balloon what it's going to do is use the dyna dynamics of this balloon object and it's going to bring everything else up it's going to bring the string up and since we set the point to where it would be tied to the balloon uh, if we hit play it's just going to go straight up and it looks pretty boring as is um, so all we need to do is just like the other scene uh, where the balloon was attached uh, at the bottom there, uh, just gonna bring some turbulence into here. Let's bring it to 35, let's say. And now you can start seeing it interact. Uh, the turbulence is gonna interact with that spline as it goes up. <clears throat> And if we bring some scale in there, you're gonna to start to see the balloon move and also move the string along with it. So that's looking a little bit more believable of how a uh, balloon would actually go up into the air. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks so far. Um, now what we can do is uh, bring in a couple other balloons for them to kind of interact with each other. So. Uh, it's gonna drag them, uh, the whole entire thing, into a null, <clears throat> and bring the axis center down there of the null, so I can kind of, when I duplicate, I can offset the rotation like so. 
bring this over here a little bit. play someone's gonna lose their balloons actually sometimes that happens that uh, if that ever happens where right away when you hit play the splines kind of go crazy Let's hit back a few times and that should straighten out the uh, dynamics there so uh, so now you got a bunch of balloons going in a bunch of different directions let's add let's add one more try to see if we can get uh, couple to bounce off each other. Okay, again, we gotta go back. All right, so we got a little bouncing and they're going up. Uh, you can see that some of these are rotating at a weird way. You know, balloons don't do that. Um, so what we need to do, go into these, uh, tags here and let's jack up the rotational mass so they don't rotate as much as they bounce uh, so now they're going in a much more believable uh, way up into the air and never tie an engagement ring to a balloon if you've heard that story that was a bad idea guy lost his engagement ring I don't know if the girl dumped him after that. Probably should have, because that was dumb. All right, so there is uh, your dynamic balloons. Render that out. Um, so yeah, there was two. There's two ways. The one where it connects with the spring, and this one's a little bit more uh, free floating. Let me know if you have any other ways. I know there's probably a bunch of different ways you can get this balloon effect going. Uh, but I'd love to hear the comments and your feedback, so uh, post them below. And uh, I'll see you in part three of the Springs and Spline Dynamics tutorial uh, extravaganza. Thanks for watching. Bye.